According to the CDC, Washington, D.C. leads the country in breast cancer instances and mortality rates. Much of that is due to lack of accessibility to proper health care. I recently spoke with Nancy Brinker, the founder of the Susan G. Komen Foundation, and now the Promise Fund of Florida, where they are building a model to help women in need of care that she hopes will be replicated across the country. There are major barriers, and I still think one of the greatest barriers is the lack of community navigators working with credible hospitals and uh, federally qualified health care centers. This is not an insurmountable problem. This is a problem we haven't been willing to deal with in the United States. Uh, even though we've all done work on it, there's not been, in a way, a solid movement up front to get this taken care of. It's not that we don't know what to do. We do. It's just that we don't do it. And the best place to get much of it, much of this done uh, is in communities. If we can get people in communities to pay attention to where the tax dollars that flow into their community go and how to fix these social determinants of care. And some of it is frustrating. It's a daily issue, but we at the Promise Fund of Florida have created a model that works. We're willing to share it with anyone in the country. I will tell you that after all these years that I've been doing this breast cancer work, I will tell you that I believe almost 25% of Americans have no access to a continuum of care that is treatment of the disease, have no access at all to that or can afford it. So there's something very wrong. This is the 50th year of the national war on cancer. 50 years ago, it was declared by President Nixon. And still so many of our citizens have no access or can afford the care. Right, so it's not just necessarily getting to the appointment initially. It's everything that comes along with it and getting the proper care. How can we continue your mission at the Promise Fund of Florida here in DC or in surrounding areas? You know what, a lot of it is very uh, arduous, but most of it's simple. It's communication. For example, with Washington Breast Care, we communicate with them. We borrowed part of what they have done there in the seventh district seven and eight, I believe where it is. And the way they render care, what they do works. But we need a lot of that in each community. First of all, we need movements and people in communities who will take the time to create these systems. It's systemic change at home. But it really is the will of the citizens and people saying, this isn't good enough. We're not doing a good job here in our community. And um, so we're really calling to action a lot of people to help and to come see what we're doing. We'll, we'll do it all with, uh, virtually uh, over uh, you know, with Zoom calls, with everything else we can do, visits to clinic. Um, we have a whole navigational um, guideline uh, course that's online. We have people who've survived through this and can talk to other women very openly about how they manage to get through and then how to build the continuum of care. How do you see this war on cancer that we've had and the progress we've made? Obviously, there's still the steps that you are fighting for and working towards. But what is your just kind of overall take on throughout your activism, how you've seen this progress? Um, I've seen this progress and I'm lucky that I, I pray, pray to God I can live long enough to see the end of this. But I've lived long enough, Kristen, to see where the words were whispered. Breast cancer was talked about. She has breast cancer to, you know, from radical Halstead mastectomies that were being done in the 50s when I was a little girl to now minimal surgery, really good experiences that people can have, again, through people like you who are willing to speak honestly and openly to your audience. And women now speaking about it, even in the most under-resourced populations in America, but we must stop kidding ourselves. We're not making enough progress. I believe that almost 25% of the women we speak of whom we speak, have no access to care, very limited Medicaid, if any, and then they have no ability through the barriers that we have to get to their care and to finish it appropriately. I spoke with Nancy about so much more in terms of the progress of getting continuum of care uh, in other communities. For more on my interview with Nancy Brinker, head to our website, wusa9.com slash great day.